we're doing tonight is the idea of introduction to the wholeness of Torah. Okay, so the first thing we need that I need to point out is that we are explaining. Remember Shema Israel, the sentence "Listen Israel," and so on, until Hashem Echad. Hashem. Echad. Now there are twenty-five. There are six words and twenty-five letters. What we're studying today is the first letter Shin. Um, it actually should be written. The, the better way is to well, let's let's put it this way. Shin looks like this, right? There is middle, right, and left. All right. So letter Shin is the letter of of Torah. Letter Mem is prayer, stands for Mincha. And letter Ein is Mitzvot, stands for Asiya, Asiyata Mitzvot. So this is the outer part of Judaism, the so to speak, the body of Judaism. Essentially, the body has a mind, heart, and limbs, or the body, let's say, the, the, the physical part. So in Judaism, the mind is the Torah, the heart is prayer, and the body is doing the mitzvot. Okay, that's just a very general and outer part. Of, it's not the real Judaism because the question is, what is Judaism? We're not discussing it now, but there is a question like that. And a lot of people are asking, well, Judaism is Torah and Mitzvot. No, that's not what Judaism is. Judaism tells you to study Torah. Torah is information. Mitzvot are actions. So information, thoughts, and actions are what you do. It's not who you are. The same thing about Torah. It's not the question of Judaism. It's the Judaism is far beyond just information and actions. It's it's much much bigger. But the outer part, the body part, is mind, heart, and body. So today, tonight, we're discussing the Torah part, which is the letter Shin. All right. Now, in Zohar, Parsha Vayera, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai gives us a very interesting analogy that, that this middle part would be called king. The right part is the wife of Hashem. It is queen. Not, not wife of Hashem, I beg your pardon. As far as Torah is concerned, there's king, queen on the right, and then there is on the left, there is They are called, it's called a maid. And in English, the queen is matrinuta. That's it, actually in, in, from Aramaic. King is the written Torah. Queen is Jewish mysticism. And that's on the right. And on the left, it is the Mishnah, or in general, the Talmud which is the logical part, or, or the, the halakha. Now, Rabbi Shimon explains that when Hashem wrote the Torah with what, if you're familiar with Kabbalah a little bit, he wrote it with Chachma, Chachma, which means the wisdom of Hashem. That is essentially Chachma of Atzilut. So with Hashem, Hashem's wisdom, he wrote the Torah. This Torah is like a garden of Hashem that we that He put His thought into, and which is you know a form of a garden. That's why it has fifty three portions, from as a number of the word Gan. Gan means a garden. So, King is the idea of the actual written Torah, 
and the explanation goes to the right, which is Jewish mysticism, to the left is, is the basically the Talmud and all the logical explanations. So therefore you let, get the letter Shin. And that is the mind or the Torah part of Judaism, which is the first letter. Okay? So I'm going to clear this down and I'm going to start discussing. So I just want to let you know that we're discussing the Shin of the Shema Israel. So we're saying that the written Torah is right in the middle. Well, I'm going to write it this way. You have. Okay, that's the Shin. On the right side, or from the written Torah, we have two types of explanation. In the right, it is, uh, first of all, it's called tree of life. On the left side, we have tree of knowledge. So this is specifically the right side and this is specifically the left side, obviously. The, this one is center. Now on the right side, what do we have? This becomes the soul of Torah. And on the left side, it is the body of Torah. On the right side is all the mystical. So you can say this is a mystical side. And on the left side is the rational side. So the body means revealed. Sometimes we call it earth but it's the idea of revelation. So it's, re it's the revealed part of Torah. And the soul is obviously hidden. So this would be the hidden secrets or the mystical secrets within the text and explanation of the spiritual reality, which is very important. So mystical means hidden secrets the secrets of the Torah, which are specifically within the text. And explanation of the spiritual reality. Excuse me, spirit reality. So you've, you've heard this before. There is external appearance and inner reality. So external appearance is actually on the left side. It just what, what it looks like on the outside. That's why we call it the body, which means that's something which is visible from the outside. Rational, it's also like... Uh, conscious mind, that you're talking to the person, that you consciously see what they're actually doing. On the other hand, the soul is hidden, your unconscious mind is hidden, nobody knows what's going on there. So that's like the secret part of Torah. Whereas the rational slash logical, it means that this is really the commentary of the text, And obviously, halacha. In this part, halacha is the major part on the left because it's the left side of Torah thinks that halacha is the main thing, whereas the right side 
knows, not doesn't think, it knows that it is by far the main, the main thing because the body is very physical. It knows itself. It's very aware of its physical existence, but has no idea of what the soul is. It, 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 you, it may be, um, let's put it this way. If a person lives just the physical part of life, eating, drinking, sleeping, working, earning money, spending money, and the occasional fun, whatever that fun is for you, it may it may appear that that what life that 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 is what life is all about. It looks that way, because a physical, physically oriented person doesn't seem to think what's what's there beyond this physicality. That's why when Moses said in the Parsha of Azino, "Listen, heavens and earth." So the interesting, uh, the higher level commentators are explaining that he's talking to two different types of Jews. If he's not talking to the physical heavens and earth, what's the point of talking to them? He's talking to the Jews who are called heavens and earth. So that, that's the right side and left side of the Jewish people. So on the right side are people who are more spiritually oriented and more have more sens sensitivity to life. Whereas on the left side are less sensitive people. They're more into physicality. So they, they might have a problem thinking there's anything beyond the physical. So Moses is speaking to both. Listen to heavens and, and earth. That's the heavens on the right side. Earth is the left side. Okay, so this is in general, right? And we actually spoke about this before. Treat this as a summary. So that's a letter shin. Now. Zohar in Parsha Vaera goes further. It says that the written Torah is like a king. So we have the idea of king. Which is the written Torah. Then we have queen. In the original language Rabbi Shimon calls the king is Malka, which means Melech in Hebrew, but in Aramaic is Malka, with the Aleph, if it's male, you put the Aleph at the end, become, Melech becomes Malka. Queen is the Matrianuta, which is, uh, from Matrianuta you get the word Matron in, in, uh, in English. So that is the idea of Jewish mysticism. Now he calls this Yud of the name of Hashem and Hey, Upper Hey, specifically Upper Hey, Yud and Hey. So Yud and Hey are well known that they are a pair, they go together, husband and wife, in this case, king and queen. And he explains there, and uh, there are further explanations by people like Ramchal and Tanya, chapter 26. That discusses this idea of the written, excuse me, the idea of the tree of life being that that uh, the Alter Rebbe actually asks an interesting question, chapter twenty six. How come in Zohar only Jewish mysticism is called the tree of life? The whole Torah is called the tree of life, not just Jewish mysticism. So when we, on, on Shabbat, when we finish reading the Torah, we raise the Torah and says, Zota Torah Shem Sam Moshe Lifnei Israel. This is the Torah that Moses put in front of the Jewish people, and it's the same for thousands of years. And then we say, Etz Chaim Hi L'Machazikim Ba. Etz Chaim, she, it's, it's actually female tense. So she is a tree of life to all who hold on to it and, and learn it and, and are joined, connected to it, and it gives them strength. So she, the Torah, is the entire Torah is tree of life. So the question is why only Jewish mysticism on the right side is called tree of life. And then the next question is why in Zohar 
the left side, the tree of knowledge is called the, not the tree of knowledge, but the tree of death. So on the right side, it's called tree of life. On the left, it's tree of, no, of death. Why? The answer is, is that at first, all were united as one tree. So there was king, queen, and the maid. Interestingly, maid is rational. Torah. So there is a mystical Torah and rational Torah. They both are included in the written Torah. So what happened? The answer is that when that all of this was united as one tree in the place called Tiferet of Atzilut. And if you, I mean, I'm using Kabbalistic terms, but if you don't, if you're not familiar with them, we'll be, we will be discussing them in quite a bit of detail later, not tonight, but in a different time. So Tiferet and Malchut were the tree of, Tiferet alone was the tree of life. The Tiferet and Malchut were Adam and Eve at the time. So Adam was in the garden and he was had a connection, a natural connection to the right side, which is the tree of life. Eve had a natural connection to the left side. And that's why male is on the right, female is on the left. However, the tree was, was united. And because she wanted to know what's this knowledge, she was very curious. Another way to look at them is that Adam and Eve are Chachma and Bina, wisdom and knowledge, right and left brain. So she was very curious and she went to study it. And unfortunately, the snake got, found a way to get to her through her curiosity. And she and Adam ate from the tree. Because they ate from that tree, they separated that tree from the tree of life. And therefore, this part, the, this, this lower made or left part, which actually became problem because it fell to the lower hay. So this is upper hay, this became lower hay. And there is, this would be like heavens. And this is earth, which is very, very far from each other. So from earth, it's practically unreachable to go up to heavens. So therefore, the problem is, since Adam and Eve ate from the tree, it fell down into the realm of Klipot. Klipot means the evil side or the negative side or the um, the side, sometimes we call it Sitra Achra, which means the other side. It's op opposing Hashem. Before had there was only one, there was only Hashem. There was only godliness. There was only only pure world. Hashem created everything perfectly. There was no such thing as, as anything bad. There was only a potential for, 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 for evil, which was in the tree of knowledge. And therefore, when they ate, they released it. They, it went out and it took that knowledge, the rational side of Torah, with them. Extremely important to understand. So therefore, what happened then? What happens to the left side of Torah when it's in the klipot? Well, first of all, it's divided. It is separated. That's why in Zohar, Rabbi Shimon calls it the tree of death. Because death refers to klipot. It fell into the hands of klipot. Ramchal, the great Kabbalist, what does he explain as a result? What has to happen now? What is the story? I'll explain it in a minute. Let me just write something down. Um, we 
We need to understand this dynamic just before I give you the answer to what is really going on since then up to now. So what the situation we have is that the mystical Torah is the upper hay. Let's just call it mysticism. And this is the rational Torah. So mysticism is Well, I don't want to repeat myself. So there's a tree of life, which is on the right, and tree, tree of knowledge, is, which is on the left. Then we need to, do, to know that this is comparable to, this is, if this is higher hay of the name of Hashem, this is the lower hay. And this is, corresponds to the inner altar of the temple, in the temple, where this is the outer altar. Now, as you probably know, the difference between them is that the outer one, on it there were offered sacrifices, which are primarily animals of various kinds, which are, which, and the, one of the biggest things is, is that it's atonement for, some, for doing some sort of a sin. Most of the time, it's um, usually it is the uh, not intentional sins, but accidental sins. But the point is that the person doing the tshuva, number one, and number two, he brings the sacrifice. So the sacrifice was offered on the outer altar. That's where the Kohanim, only Kohanim could do that. And they took the sacrifice and they killed it right in front of the eyes of the person who was bringing the sacrifice. That happened on the outer altar. So a lot of blood was flowing there. That's the left side. Again, I'm just repeating it all the time. This is the left side. That's why the left side has the color of red. Note carefully that it's connected to Asav, which is also on the left. And his color is red. In fact, Asav is called red all over. He's, uh, he's, he he's himself was was red. He's like face and and he likes red clothing. He likes red food. Everything is red about him. And the inner altar is on the right side, it, which is inside inside of the temple. And that's on the outer of the temple. What happened on the inside is they were brought bringing incense, which was only coin the the head coin the lar. Kohen Agadol could only do it, and he did it twice a day. Once in the morning, once in between, um, between the sun set and the stars coming out. There were 11 incenses, and he was bringing them. So that was bringing peace to Hashem. And that is the right side. And here's the idea of white, because white is the idea of peacefulness. The next thing to, un to understand is that in the because it's higher hay and lower hay, the correspondence is, is also that there is higher mother. This is a Kabbalistic ideas which will we will come in handy, and we will will need to understand this. Higher mother is the upper hay, and the lower mother is the lower hay. The higher mother is called, is the queen, the queen of the house, and the lower mother is is a helper, or as we call in English, a maid. Therefore, the queen, the main one, is the Jewish mysticism, and all the halacha and all the general 
interpretations are just supposed to be a helper to Jewish mysticism and not the main thing. So this is important of right and left and right in Judaism is always more important than the left. And one more thing to understand before we go any further is that these two are extremely important because what is the whole point of wisdom? It is called the whole the tachlis, the whole tachlit, the whole purpose and objective of wisdom is tshuva umasim tovim. So since we have two, higher hay and lower hay, higher which is the mystical and lower is the rational, they give us higher tshuva and lower tshuva. This is very, this is, this becomes, especially now in, in the time that we're in in the world, this becomes extremely important. Okay, so written Torah is where it all comes from. It goes to the right and left, tree of life, tree of knowledge, soul, and mystical, mystical soul and rational body. And the lower parts, remember, mysticism and rational parts are higher and lower hay, inner corresponding to inner altar and outer altar. We have right and left, colors are right, the white and red. The important to understand is that they are, the Jewish mysticism is the queen, and rational Torah is the maid, the halacha is just the maid. And the queen, the level of Jewish mysticism is the one to teach you and help you and guide you and direct you to do the higher tshuva, which is now probably the most important thing in the world. Whereas halacha, which we do need it, of course, there's no question about that. There's, you cannot reach higher tshuva without doing the lower tshuva first. Therefore, the lower tshuva is the halachic observance of the law of Moses, which is both written and oral traditions. Not like somebody who have who has changed it and invented and reconstructed anything and everything to, to suit their own personal inclinations. It's the original law of Moses. So once you do the lower tshuva, then what? It's not the entire thing. I want you to understand clearly that the main thing here is the Jewish mysticism by far. And therefore, we need to, to, number one, connect the rational side of Torah to the Jewish mysticism, study both of them. Then Torah is a complete tree of life and it'll, be, it'll give you life. If, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai warns us, if somebody would be disconnecting it and studying only the left side of Torah, that person, it makes no difference who it is, whether a normal lay person, small rabbi, big rabbi, head of movement, makes no difference. If somebody only studies the left part of Torah without the right up part of Torah, this is the tree of death. I'm extremely serious about this. A lot of people need to hear this, this message. The original way, the way Hashem made it right from the start, is that Jewish mysticism was the main thing, it's the queen, whereas the halacha is only the maid. If you look at the world for thousands of years, then you see there's a problem. It's like you look at the world and you see that there's lots and lots of what we call olam hasheker, the world of lies and deception. And unfortunately, we have it in, in Torah, Torah as well. That will have to be fixed because up to now, and something that comes to mind is uh, Rabbi Sholom Dovber Schneerson started Tom Chetim Tmimim, the yeshiva. That was a major undertaking because he started a new way of learning Torah. And a lot of people that came, they started learning Kabbalah and Hasidism. And they said, what is this? We're not used to this Torah. He said, get used to the real Torah. This is the right way to study Torah. If you only study the Halakha, the Talmud, the Shulchan Aruch, what you're used to, that is not good enough. And if that was over 100 years ago, now it is multiplied by at least a thousand. 
All right, I'm taking this page off. We're going to the next page. So we have, in the middle, we have the king, which is written Torah. On the right side, there's a queen, and on the left side is the maid. Let's write it down. I'll put brackets, halacha. And the queen is mysticism. Now, each one is a shin, letter shin, the, the triple on it in its own right. So the four, let's put it, let's divide it into this. arrangement we have each one of those has their her, her own system organization and structure the left side the left side of torah is in a language that we used before shat remez I will translate, of course, in a second. Remes and Drush. Now, no, normally we say Drush. Ashkenazim use the word Drush often. The Sfaradim use the word Drash. But it's, it's exactly the same thing. So we will... Just give me one second. Each one of them is like a person. Let's let's start slightly differently. Each one of them, by the way, this is one of the Kabbalistic explanations to why Yaakov married two sisters, Rachel and Leah. Okay, Leah is the higher one, Rachel is the lower one in in spherotic configuration. So each one, each one has her own body. Heart and mind. Okay. Now, on the left, okay, in normal language, we call this pshat, pshat from the word pashut, which means Simple and contextual meaning, which means that's what Hashem meant in, as a, in a context of simple level of Torah. The heart comes from the from heart is the word remez. And remez means hints and allegories. And you have general Jewish beliefs. They also come here. For example, the Hashem is one, that uh, he is the only power controlling everything that there is written an oral Torah, that there is there are 613 mitzvot. How do you know there are 613 mitzvot? We learn it from 
from uh, from this level, from level of, of there's it is hinted uh, in many places. For the for example, it says uh, Hashem says I created the earth. The word barati created equals six hundred thirteen. And uh, why? In order to work it and to guard it. So to work it, to use it, to, to tend to it, that's positive mitzvot. And um, to guard it means negative mitzvot. Also, we have seven mitzvot of, uh, of, um, of Noah. So we have here Agada and Midrash. Depends which Midrash. There are a number of Midrashim. But the general... General Agadah Midrash, which are stories and uh, further hints and explanations to what is happening in Pshat, that's Remish. Mine is a more, let's say, more mature, higher level of approaching this rational left side of Torah. That is primarily Halakha. And uh, the word here is Drush. Drush means from the word Lidrosh. Lidrosh means to search and analyze and investigate. So this is intellectual intellectual investigation and ana- analysis, analysis. Intellectual analysis, which is primarily primarily halakha. That's why the main book here is the the, the Talmud, which explains it is the intellectual explanation of what is really going on. So what we have here is the maid, the hal- primarily the halakha is the main part here. So we have body, heart, and mind. Okay, how are we doing so far? You... Okay, that's fairly straightforward. Now let's have a look on the right side. We have body, heart, and mind. Also, of the queen and of the mystical queen. So she is the closer, closest one to the king, which is the wife. And the three parts of Jewish mysticism I, I added the word Jewish because th- there are some mystical stuff going on in the world which have nothing to do with Jewish mysticism, nothing to do with proper proper Torah. They have it's their own whatever whenever you see the word mysticism in other religions, they are not they have nothing to do with God's proper Jewish mysticism. Right? That's just what God gave us is the real Torah. He told us not to add, not to to do subtract, and not to change and rearrange anything. Because as soon as you change anything, it is no longer God's Torah, and it's no longer perfect. So therefore, whatever other religions you have out there, they are products of the imagination of the writer of those religions, not God. Jewish mysticism and Jewish halakha is exactly from Hashem. All right, so what is the body, heart, and mind of Jewish mysticism? Well, it starts with the famous word Kabbalah. Kabbalah is like the body of Jewish mysticism. And if when you're talking about levels in ordinal, um, in a way that they came out, although originally Hashem gave the Kabbalah first and then Unfortunately, both Adam and the Jewish people dropped level beginning when Adam was created and when we received the Torah in Sinai. But in general, the levels are one, two, and three. So therefore, Hashem actually gives them from above to below. But we, the human mind, is ascending, going up. So here are the six levels. Kabbalah is level number four, not less and not more. Kabbalah is not the whole entire Jewish mysticism. That is actually the wrong usage of the word. So the word, the the actual original word is the word sod. Sod means secret. 
So secrets of Torah are right here. Of the Torah text. Okay. As we said before, it is also the explanation. It's also the explanation of the what is beyond the physical. So what is beyond the body, heart, and mind of the Jewish halakha? What's beyond it? Well, the soul. So the soul, which is essentially, that's what the queen is about, is all about soul. And this is all about halakha. Okay? So therefore, but the, the body of Jewish mysticism starts with with what is generally known as Kabbalah, which is the level of Sod, which is secret. Or secrets. Now, here's a surprise to most people. That is definitely not the end of the story, and, and in fact, only the beginning of Jewish mysticism. What is the next quantum leap? What's the next jump above and beyond Kabbalah, and that is, I'll just write it out here, it is called Hasidism. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time studying each one. This is, this is the general picture, obviously. Like I told you at the beginning, it's introduction. Each one of those has to be studied independently because it's like a whole entire level onto itself, right? It's whole, the pshat is its own world, rem is its own world, and mind halacha is its own its own world, kabbalah is its own, even though it's it's a great jump above the body of the Torah, it's its own study, its own you need its own approach and even its own way of serving Hashem. So you serve Hashem in one way according to the left side and serving Hashem from the right side is actually, a, it's not it, it's different, but it's, it's more of an additional and complementary to the left. So you really need both right and left, just like you have two hands. You need to use them both. Hasidism goes far beyond that. So generally we say Hasidism is secrets of secrets. So, number one, sorry, there's not much room here. Number one is secrets of secrets. Number two, and uh, you see, I just run out of space. I'll write it over here. Number one is secrets. Secrets of Kabbalah, basically. And number two, it is it is already part of, of the essence of Torah. And again, I'm going to have to restart and redraw everything on a much deeper level, but then we're going to have to use much, much deeper concepts of Jewish mysticism. Therefore, we're going to have to dive into them one by one. This is a general view. Number one, it's secrets of secrets. Number two, it is relative essence of Torah. When we say Torah here, we mean four levels. So therefore, all of these Levels one, two, one, two, three, and four, they are like the what we said the word pardes. If you remember, uh, pardes is P for Pshat, R for Remez, D for Drush, and S for Sod. Pardes. So we this is the idea. Using those acronyms, we get four levels of Torah. Then the fifth and sixth are essence of these four. So this is, would be the relative essence of Torah. And number six, 
As you may have imagined, this would be the next quantum leap. It doesn't finish with, with number five Hasidism. Of course, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to have to say this. There are a lot of Jewish people, whether students or teachers, which are seem to be stuck on some of those levels. And all it is is being immature, right? You're supposed to grow up. The growth is from left to right, although Hashem wrote it from right to left, and that's why Hebrew is actually writing from right to left. But the way of the world is from left to right. So therefore, the order of growth and development from a human perspective is from the left, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And as we grow, we're we supposed to start the simple con contextual meaning, which means you just simply take the Chumash and start reading it in its, its most simple way. That's age five. Then we go into Mishnah with its hints and Jewish general Jewish beliefs and Agadah, which is part of Mishnah, you study at age 10. Then you age 15, you go to step number three and you, you learn Gemara and the Talmud. And then you keep on going, you cannot stop. But the problem is that a lot of people, both teachers and students, are, seem to be stuck at some level and they can't go any further. And we had a good question from somebody a few weeks ago. How come does that happen? And one of the main reasons is that nobody has ever explained to you all of these levels on one page. This has never happened before. So you don't, people are not even aware of the system, system, organization, and structure of all levels. And number one. Number two, this has not been included in, in our Torah education system. Another explanation is that we seem to be lower souls and we not everybody is really understanding what's going on here. Some souls are left oriented towards the left, some souls are oriented towards the right, and that comes naturally to you. But we need to learn both. So the next quantum leap is the true mind and intelligence of the whole entire thing, and that is the Mashiach. Well, I'll, I'll instead of the word Mashiach or the Torah of Mashiach, let's say the light of Mashiach. This would mean transcendent. essence of Torah and of course that's the job of Mashiach to clarify all this and to explain how each and every level is operating the dynamics of each each one and how it, it each one complements the others so they actually work in, as a full body and you have, even though we have one body, but we have body and soul. So on both levels, we need both of them, obviously. And this, now we're coming to the point of the, the question that we raised earlier. The question was, what is the situation? What happens after after Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, what happens then? Since he has separated the, the tree of knowledge, which is halacha, he has separated it from the mysticism, from the tree of life. Well, now what? This is a very difficult subject because... First of all, we need to understand 
the separation itself. Second of all, we need to understand the result of the separation. And the third is the solution. It's very much like being a doctor. What, what is going on here? As uh, you probably heard of before, there are two parts. The first of all is the right diagnosis, and the second is to find the right solution. So even if you have a good diagnosis, that doesn't mean that you know what to do about it, right? You need to have both. So to understand of what actually happened is that the separation has not only, it's not only a question of separ separating. It's that the, the left side of the Torah has dropped, literally went into prison, so to speak, to the clipot. And now the Jewish people, Adam represents the Jewish people, the Jewish souls. In fact, the word Adam originally meant all Jewish soul, souls in one body. So all 600,000 Jewish souls were in this one person on the sixth day of creation. There were no non-Jewish souls in him at first, right? The way God created him and the whole entire creation is in full perfection. Only one thing was missing for which Adam was actually created, and that is to tend and to work and to guard the garden in order to bring the higher revelation of godliness into the world, which is beyond the normal world. But the world was perfect. There was nothing wrong. There was nothing evil. There was no death, no sickness, no pain and of birth, no nine months, no, no problems whatsoever. Very hard for us to, to imagine it. The trees were also perfect, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. So now, since he separated the tree of knowledge, it has become, as Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai explains, it has become the tree of death. You can only get this information from the Zohar, right? You cannot, you can never get this information from the Halakha itself. So. If you studied the halakha for the past 50 years, you would have no idea this is even happening. So we need to learn from somebody like the Ramchal and other Kabbalists of what is what happened afterwards. So since this part of Torah is in the hands of the Klippot, what that is the that's the illness, that's the sickness, that's the problem. What do you do now? What is the solution? And the solution is, as the Ramchal explained, and by the way, Ramchal was so great, he lived almost 40 years. He, in the early part of the 18th century, he was the reincarnation of Rebbe Akiva. Most Kabbalists accept that as, as a fact. So why? Because Rebbe Akiva started learning when he was around 40, and then he learned Torah for about 40 years, and then he started teaching for 40 years. So Rebbe Akiva learned, was alive 120 years, just like Moses. And he was the reincarnation of Moses, of course. But the first 40 years he missed on learning. So therefore he came back as the Ramchal. <clears throat> so the Ramchal is, is explaining it this way. After Adam has dropped the halachic left part of Torah into Klippot, it became necessary for the Jewish people to work on this halakha for thousands of years. And by them studying it, analyzing it, digging into it and clarifying it and whitening, which is called birur. Birur is the, birur also means atonement. So by your hard work, you're atoning for something. And always, whenever we have hard problems and hardships, we're atoning for something from the past, always. Because ne we never have problems just like that. There are, no, there are no accidents. So just like Rabbi Shneur Zalman explained in Tanya what the work is, the avodah, what is the work for each individual Jewish person, so Mashiach is going to be explaining what is the work for the whole entire Jewish nation. And nation, not only this generation, but all generations from Moses to Mashiach. 
And this atonement, this work, this avoda, and this birur, this hard work, is on a number of levels. There's a level which is called action, that's mitzvot. There's a level of the heart, that body, heart, and then there's a level of mind, and then there's a level of soul. I'm now talking about, or we are now discussing, the idea of intellectual birur. So the Jewish people have got this job, this intellectual work that up to the coming of Mashiach, as Ramchal explains, the Torah scholars of all thousands of years, their job is to clarify the halacha. So if, uh, as an example is given, if you go and looking, for example, if you went to look for gold, well, here's, here's a mountain, go and look for it. Well, where is it? So you have to take a whole lot of uh, volume of dirt and then get rid of the dirt so you get a little piece of gold, right? That's hard work. So therefore, all of our rabbis and great thinkers had to literally work hard with this halakha. And it took thousands of years until up to this now early part of the 21st century, all halakha is done. One of the interesting things is uh, there was, um, I think it was about roughly about 15 years ago when there was um, a satellite went um, obviously left uh, the, uh, the Earth and as it was in orbit, since one of those people, who, who, one of the pilots, astronauts, was Jewish, before he left, the rabbis got together and sat down and actually started getting halakha of what should he do when he, when he is in orbit. How does he keep Shabbat? When is the sunrise? When is the sunset? When is this time to say Shema Israel? How does he keep three meals of Shabbat? Right? So they had to do it before he left. And he did it apparently. And what's in I mean it's not so interesting, but it is it is important to note that the satellite blew up and he he died in the in the process. Which in itself is quite clear that he was born for this halakha to be made. And once he made it, he had no, no longer any reason to live. So we see that this technologi technological age has given us many more instances of, of what's, uh, what, what to work on and what's allowed, what's not allowed, including things like timers, um, electronic timers and, and uh, all electronical equipment in the house, what to do on Shabbat and so on. So this is the point to understand. Up to Mashiach's coming, all of this left side, which is Jewish halacha, has to be completed completely. When Mashiach comes, Vilna Gaon is, is probably the main one known for this saying that I'm about to share with you. He explained that the, it is the job of the first part of Mashiach, which it is called Mashiach ben Yosef, to teach secrets of Torah. He is the official big-time teacher of Jewish mysticism. This, according to Vilna Gaon, starts in the year 1782. We have already spoken a number of times about this timing, the periods. From 1782 till 1990, is, according to the Vilna Gaon, the time, the, or the main time of Mashiach ben Yosef. So 1782 till 1990 is 208 years, equals ben Yosef in Hebrew. From 1991 onwards, according to Vilna Gaon, it's the time of Mashiach ben David. And there are a number of things that we, are, we, we have quite a lot of information of what happens in uh, the year 2000, it's called Ketzayamim, the end of the, the days starting then, and everything is going to start falling vertically down. The world is going to be corrupt, 
every year as goes by for interestingly 21 years if you you basically from 2020 to 2000 sorry, excuse me from 2000 till 2020 inclusive it's 21 years so if you start the year 2000 as the first year then 2020 it's 21 years and the 21 has they got many many things that we already discussed I don't want to confuse issues here tonight, but the point is that from 2020 onwards is the time of this final one to come and be revealed, and we are expecting him very shortly. According to Vilna Gaon, when he starts teaching Jewish mysticism, and he calls it Pidyon Ha'emet, the redemption of truth, which means that the truth the word emet, the three letters of emet are pertaining exactly to the three parts of Jewish mysticism. Even though emet in general is all of Torah, but the left side has to be yet connected. And I can't stress this enough. If the left side is left unconnected to the right side, then according to Jewish mysticism, and I'm saying it exactly in the name of Rabbi Shimon Barichai, the super holy tzaddik, it is then called the tree of death. It is not a good idea and it's dangerous for the Jewish people to only study halakha without the Jewish mysticism. So this is, is yet to be connected. And then Moshiach is going to be teaching and making just like there was a tremendous work of study, digging into organizing, preparing, managing, and putting it, it as, uh, into a, a system, organization, and structure of the whole entire left side, the same thing has to be in the right side. And we have amazing amount of disjointed yeshivot, rabbis, teachers, st this is studying Kabbalah, not accepting Hasidism. These are studying Hasidism, not, not accepting Kabbalah. The third one doesn't, doesn't, doesn't accept both Kabbalah and Hasidism. We have a, a really horrible situation, if, if you know what I mean. A lot of people are unaware even that this is even happening. So therefore, Mashiach is going to come and start making an order in Torah. This, the Vilna Gaon says, will be Tikkun, in Hebrew, Tikkun, Ha emet. The, the rectification and even saving of the truth itself. So truth is not proper truth. The, the truth, meaning Torah, is not proper one piece of body and soul. In chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, it says that the angel will come to you, pit on, suddenly he will arrive. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 1, it says that my angel will come to you. And then it says, Ha'adon, will, the master will arrive. So some translate that the first one would be the angel of death, will come suddenly. And now we, as if you have noticed what's happening since 2020, that was the case. Then Adon refers to Mashiach. He's a second angel of Hashem. Angel means like a messenger, right? Emissary, agent. And of course, Yitzhahara is definitely a servant of Hashem. No question about it. But he's from the left side. From the right side comes Mashiach. He is the positive agent, the positive angel. So he is going to be sitting and uh, it says there that he will be 
dealing with the tribe of Levi first. The tribe of Levi are the teachers of the Torah. Levi is supposed to be the ones who are supposed to be the, the teachers and the um, mentors of the Jewish people. So he is going to be fixing the Torah and Torah scholars first. And to me that sounds like a very good idea. And I think for the moment we'll leave it as, as, as that. Uh, I think more or less we are have covered everything I want to cover. And uh, uh, one more thing I'm going to say, and then we can take questions and answers if anybody wants to. Um, I'm going to clear that away. Actually, let me do it. So just wanted to add one more idea to this. is that these six levels uh, this would be like fire which is a, which is of the shape of a yud and then will be one big yud here in the middle and that that is actually The Jewish menorah. So there is mid mid point here. Excuse my drawings. I'm still learning how to use this electronic apparatus. The theory of, of the menorah says that there is a central pole. And then from it, three come out to the right and three come out to the left. In essence of Torah, this middle one is infinite light. Referring to Hashem himself. And these three would be Pshat is on, on the left side, Remez and Rush. And on the right side, the here is Kabbalah, Hasidism and Mashiach. So first we need to get these three on the left sorted and ordered and managed and organized. Then the same thing to the right side. And after Mashiach there will be even seventh. That is God himself is going to be teaching us. And these are the levels. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then after six, towards the end of the days of Mashiach, towards it's approximately 40 years, once he cleans up the land of Israel and cleans up the world and gets rid of all negative elements from the world, the world will be actually ready to receive Hashem's presence. And once he comes, there will be, well, I'm just going to put here in the brackets, it's third part, third part of the infinite light where Hashem is going to be teaching directly the Jewish people. And he is the, the teacher number seven. Okay. So this is the, the Jewish menorah. The, the real reason why we have seven. There are many other reasons, of course. But this is the Torah part of the menorah. And I believe that would be enough for tonight. Um, we have a little time if anybody wants to answer, answer questions. Hi, Rabbi. I have a question. Ronit here. Hi. And, and Yaakov, thank you so much for this beautiful lesson. I'm glad you, you're here. I didn't even know you were here. So I'm, I'm really glad you, you joined here. us. Thank you for the dedication. Um, okay, so I have a question. Uh, yeah. In the order that you have it going, Shat, Remez, Drash, Kabbalah, Hasidut, um, I always learned that Hasidut was the, like, kind of a watered-down version of Kabbalah, so how is it a higher version at the same time? <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How many months have you got? Um, <clears throat> All the time in the world. All the time in the world. <clears throat> well, that's one of the. This is one of the problems. You see, this is this is the problem with the education system. Now, we have this by tradition that Moses was that there were people. There was a situation when people went to war, and when they came back, some they did something wrong. So Moses went to the 
to the leaders, to the officers. And he started re rebuking them, rebuking them. Why this happened, why that happened. And the Torah says, why does he rebuke them? They are not the soldiers. The soldiers made the problem. So Hashem explains in the Torah, when there is a problem with the people, ask the rabbis, ask the leaders, ask the, the mentors. They are the ones who are responsible for the people. Because they are teaching them what to do, what not to do. And they are also responsible for the, for what they do. Because there is a rule that if there is a, there is a synagogue and the rabbi does not teach properly, if he doesn't criticize people for, for doing something wrong, guess who, guess who pays for that sin? Not the people, the rabbi. That's a law. How and why? Because the rabbi actually, rabbi of, of a group of people, doesn't matter small or large, gets judged twice. Once, like anybody else, for their own actions, whether good or bad, and the second time for the actions of the ones that are following him. So we have a situation, you ask the question, which is, on the face of it, it sounds like a simple question. I thought it was this, but that's, that's a total mistake. A lot of people think that because, because a lot of people have no idea what is going on. They have no idea the difference between Kabbalah and Hasidism. That has to be studied. I cannot give you the whole entire idea here, but we are going to be studying all of this in detail. Right? This is supposed to be an introduction. Like I told you, it may seem like everything is in place, and it's true. This is the, the general anatomy. But it's not the question, that this is not an explanation of what is Torah. It's an explanation of how, or the structure of how we study the Torah. There is the first, is the Pshat way of study, Remes, Drush. Then there is a secret, that's the Kabbalah. Then Kabbalah is here, and Hasidism is the next jump up. Every one of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a jump. Right? So, for example, Kabbalah talks about 10 spherot of Hashem. Do you have any idea where? Which 10 spherot is it talking about? Well, it's only talking about the fourth world, which is the, the, the world of Atzilut. Not more, not less. Whereas Hasidism, which is a, a, a taste of, of the true essence of Torah, which is Mashiach, the light of Mashiach, really, is starting to give us a whole different, different um, magnitude of ten spherot of Hashem. Now going from infinite light. So what it, what what we're talking about is the ten spherot discussed in Kabbalah are only the tenth one that Hasidism talks about. Does that give you a slight idea? So therefore, the what some people are saying that the Hasidism is some sort of watered down version or simple explanation of Kabbalah is completely wrong. It explains some of the Kabbalah things in a more simpler way. Yes, that's because Kabbalah directly can't be understood normally and logically. It's too, it's too high. So therefore Hasidism has a capability of explaining the complexity of Kabbalah in a simpler way. But that's only one of the functions that Hasidism does. There are many other functions. For example, there are some mistakes in Kabbalah which Hasidism fixes. So the, if you're looking at this model in front of you, number one, which is the simple explanation to Torah, does give you the contextual proper understanding of the text but then has problems, doesn't understand, this, there has limitations. Then number two comes in and explains that. But two has problems, and number three comes in and explains number, what's wrong with that the two can't explain. So therefore, three is actually the totality of one, two, and three. But three, the Talmud says, for example, the Talmud says, um, 
but I don't know if there is reincarnation or not. For example. Yeah, there is a soul, but I don't doesn't I can't explain it. I don't know what it is, where it is, how it is, when does it come, where does it go, into the body, when does it leave? It just gives you the halakha of there is a time of the person dies, for example, and this is nothing to do with negative. Just for example, when, th- when somebody is born, right? It says, okay, so so you have a you have a that's your birthday. It tells you next major st- stage is bat, bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Next stage is 20. In halachic terms, 20 is when you, even though you, the boys and girls at 13 and 12 are supposed to start doing mitzvot, but they're not judged for the mitzvot until they're 20. Then Talmud says they start being judged. But w- why? Why not being judged but when you're 16 or 17 or 18? There's no explanation. Kabbalah come, number four comes and says, I have an answer for you. The answer is as follows. When you're born, nefesh comes in. When you're bat mitzvah, bar mitzvah, ruach comes in. When you're 20, neshama comes in. That's the intellectual part. Then, because you're full, you have nefesh, ruch, neshama. You have the three major components, mind, heart, and body. You are a full person. Therefore, you're responsible and you're going to be judged. That's number one. Number two, Kabbalah says much more than that. Did you know that Kabbalah explains that before you're born, any one of us, there are two types. This right and left is extremely deep in Torah. There is right for angels that are coming with you into the world. They are, they are leading you into the world. And there are four on the left side. Above them, there's one, the, the, the manager of the four. On the right side, you have the four major, like every Jewish soul comes to the world. Remember, Jewish soul, not non-Jewish. Every Jewish soul comes to the world. It is brought by four archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. Yud Kevavket, it's Hashem's name. And above them is the main angel Metatron. He's the manager of the four. Depending on the mazal of this soul, these four can they go in different arrangement. That's why we have different nature, different nature of the godly soul, but we have a different nature of the what you might call an animal soul, the 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 opposite. There are two op- oppositions. This is a kabbalistic idea which we'll discuss discuss separately. Just giving you an, a bit of an idea. On the left side, there are four destructive angels that we say. When there's Mari, Vehu, Rachum, Chaper, Avon, Velo Ashkit, yeah, that part, there are four damaging angels, and above, above them is the Malachamavet, the angel of death. They are leading the animal soul. The Yetzahara in the animal soul, when you get born, that's when, according to Zohar, that's why you cry. Because until you're born, you have your godly soul studying Torah for nine months, which is like heaven. Like everything is given. You don't have to work. You don't have to even raise your hand to eat. Everything is done perfectly, naturally. Angel comes to you and teaches you the whole entire Torah during nine months. You literally have absolute paradise over there. But then you're born and Yitzhahara comes in. Life starts. Difficulty starts. Physical world is, for the soul, a time of work. In heaven, it's resting. Everything is wonderful and beautiful. Here is a time of work. So when you're 20, with the process of, uh, of souls coming into you, that's when you fully are responsible and you're actually responsible since time you're bar mitzvah. But the, the full thing starts at 20. And of course, Kabbalah says you have reincarnation. Absolutely no question about it. So you see how with every one of those, the next level, the next higher level, always not only brings new information, but fixes the um, 
inability of the previous level to see the full picture. So if you're looking at this as, as, as um, floors, floor number one is Pshat, floor number two is Remes, floor number three is Drush, and each floor becomes bigger and bigger. So you have fourth floor, which is Kabbalah, and here is something I want you to remember. When you look out of the window of that whichever floor you're on, there's a saying, your standpoint determines your viewpoint. The higher you stand, the further you can see. So therefore, the same thing in Torah. The higher the floor level, the more vision is in front of you. You can see much more. You can understand much more. It's open to you. New information come, becomes open. And you can, see, you can reach further with your eyesight. But then Kabbalah is restrictive too. Kabbalah has certain issues and problems which also he doesn't understand. For example, Kabbalah says to the, to the Talmud, you're only teaching lower tshuva, but we, we can teach you the higher tshuva. Right? So there's much more. Then Kabbalah says, but in infinite life, we don't understand it. There, it is there, but we don't understand it. All we know is that there is this desire called Anaem Loch, comes from there, which from Zohar, I shall rule, I shall be a king. That's desire for Hashem to create the world. And then there's potential tansferot. There's, there's also, there's a bit of their Olam HaMachshava of Hashem. And besides those, a few, few points, we can't discuss. The infinite light is not to be discussed. There comes number five, Hasidism, and says, yes, it can be discussed because we are the next floor. We can see further and we can explain the, the infinite light. In fact, it has two major ones, but with proper study, there are three infinite levels of infinite light. The third one is the one in the middle in, in your diagram. It's called Kadmon in uh, Hasidism. In Kabbalah, it's called Olama Machshava, the, the world of thought. Where, where that desire is for, to create the world. So Hashem had a thought to create the, the four worlds. But Hasidism says, we will explain the three levels of lights to you. Plus, we can, I actually made a list. We have at least 10 mistakes slash unfinished business in Kabbalah that Hasidism has completed and explained. So Hasidism comes along and says, all of those questions that you had that you, you're not sure of, here is the answer. Just like you, Kabbalah, have, uh, has, you have um, rectified and complemented and explained what Talmud couldn't explain, so we are going to explain what you couldn't. And we need to study this. I can't... This, Weeks and months. I wasn't kidding. I wasn't exaggerating. With just a lot, an amazing amount of study, which we and I started going into all these Jewish mysticism subjects one by one. Uh, at the moment, the first our first our first topic is the Pardes model, which more or less is introduction of. And don't forget that Mashiach also comes along and is going to start fixing up certain things which Hasidism hasn't explained. It would get, it will become interesting. I can tell you that. Is that enough for, for an answer for you for right now? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank you very much for joining us. Blessings thank to you. all.